Hello again, Eric the Travel Guy with you. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel. It really does make a difference. And you may want to share this video as well because you're about to meet Kristen Addis. She is behind the website, BeMyTravelMuse.com. Kristen, it's good to meet you. Thank you for being here. Thanks for having me. All right, now, if I understand this correctly, we are zooming out to Reno, Nevada, where you normally don't spend a lot of time. Is that right? That's right. And I moved here in May. I used to live in Berlin and it's my new home base, but now I get a chance to explore it. So that's cool. This is going to be perfect. You can have a gambling habit. We can, <laughs> surely you can get that underway at least in the next four months. Reno's a really cool little town. You just have to show up to figure it out, which is, isn't that kind of true? Absolutely. I didn't have the best impression of it before I ended up coming here. And now I realize it's beautiful. Lake Tahoe's right there. There's all these pine trees, so much hiking. So there's a lot more to it than the casinos. Yeah. And, and you do have the casino. Like what's yeah. funny about casinos is everybody thinks casino, right? It's like, first of all, you know, 90 year old women hitting the one arm. And, and, and there is that. I'll give you that. But what's interesting about it to me is that when you have casino infrastructure, a lot of times, with casino infrastructure comes culinary, comes wine, comes, uh, you know, shopping, hotel rooms. I mean, there's a lot of infrastructure and a lot of good that comes with it. A lot of heartache there on the casino floor, too. Don't get me wrong. Um, <laughs> but there's certainly plenty of that. All right. We need to talk about, first of all, why did you decide this is the gig that you want to have? I realize on the surface, who doesn't want to travel the world? and get paid to do so. I get it. But why personally? Why did you decide this was going to be it for you? I didn't know that I was going to become a travel blogger, Instagram, or YouTuber exactly, because this wasn't exactly a thing when I started way back in 2012, <laughs> which is so funny because it's not that long ago, but I was working in finance. It was really not for me. I decided that I was going to quit. And my hope was that I could get a book deal or maybe some other freelance writing from starting my travel blog. Then the travel influencer industry be, was born. And so I was in a good position at that point to turn more into a full range of photography, video, and blogging. And so it's been in a, a crazy adventure ever since. I'm, I, is your degree in, uh, do you have an MBA in business? I don't know if you do. I don't, I don't think it's here in the, the check. <laughs> no, it doesn't say that you do. And yet here you are a business owner. Yeah, I think the entrepreneurial journey is available to anyone. And I, you know, especially as an American, as Americans, we are sort of instilled with this potential gene. So we're told we can do anything. And if you really believe it, I, I believe the hard work and the passion. If, if those two things are there, then you can make your dreams come true. I mean, that must be true for you. You're sitting here. Come on now. Let's not make it about me. Oh, well, okay. <laughs> uh, no, I, yes, absolutely. Of course, we, yes, we do share that. Um, and I do wonder if it has something to do with how we were raised but I do think it comes from within. I do believe that that at the end of the day, especially when you're in those formative years, that we don't really understand are as formative as they are. And we have a lot of inside, or a lot of outside influence from our friends, people we care about who tell us, well, gee, that's, well, I don't know, maybe you shouldn't do that. I don't know. And a bunch of worry. War you know, you have to navigate through all of that. And when at the end of the day, you got to lay down in bed and go, Okay, we can do this. And I'm not sure where that comes from. Where do you think it comes from? Ooh, I think that maybe it comes from realizing that failure is just part of life and not a big deal and that everything is always changing and that if you never try things, they never happen, of course. So for me, I just felt like there was no reason not to take a chance when I, I knew I didn't like the job I did have. So, I mean, what, what is it a, really a life if you don't enjoy what takes up most of every day? You see, Kristen, and you may have thought we were going to do five minutes on, oh, your latest and greatest from this faraway place and this and so. And you know what? I've watched the material. You obviously are, are excellent at what you do. And anybody can do that. They can go and watch these things and they will see that you are true. But I am interested in 
the person that you are versus the person who's on the camera box. And I think that, that who you are is just as interesting as what you do. And, and so thank you for answering honestly and, and, and being forthcoming and humble in the fact that you do have what is perceived to be a dream job, but that it is a tremendous amount of work. Yeah, it is. It's a tremendous amount of work. But again, if you really like what you're, if you love what you're doing, you will do it anyway, won't you? Well, I, I believe, don't make me cry now. Stop it. Yes, I, <laughs> yes, I, I, yes, I believe that it, again, but that's a hard value proposition to sell someone. That's a, that's a really difficult, you know, you talk about generations of, of, you know, we work, we do this, we retire. You know, I certainly have plenty of friends uh, that are what should be their retirement age, 65, 70. And I always say, what am I going to do? Retire and play golf all day? Of course, I love what I do. I'm going to do it till I drop dead. The question I would have for you is, you set out to do this, maybe you didn't even exactly know what the end game was or the exit strategy yet. What was the biggest thing that you learned almost immediately after doing this for a living? That it's possible. I mean, the first step is believing what you want is attainable. So for me, when I first started, I mean, I took off to Bangkok eight years ago with only a carry-on backpack, one-way ticket by myself, no plan. And the journey just unfolded in the most beautiful, organic, serendipitous way. And I think for, through that, I learned to trust in the journey to know that I wouldn't know what's coming and that I, I am adaptable. And I think especially in this day and age with what we're dealing with right now, knowing that you're adaptable is super helpful. That, that way you can just trust life. Yeah. Let me ask you this too, because um, I know you get asked this a lot, so I'm just going to jump right on this bandwagon. Um, <laughs> or maybe you don't, I don't know. Um, Somebody sitting watching this today with the presupposition that, that tomorrow is going to come and we're going to get through what we're dealing with today. Under normal, normal circumstances, what advice do you give to people on how to plan a vacation that's meaningful to them? Well, first, I mean, I sort of have a system for planning my trips. First of all, the most important sacred information I could get is from someone who seems to me to have similar taste to mine. So if I am in a beautiful place that's just blowing my mind and I meet somebody there and they say, you know what else you would really like? X, Y, Z destination. That jumps to the top of my list. That's how I discovered for myself, Mozambique in um, Southern Africa. And so that, you know, you always meet people who can give you really good suggestions. So that's number one. Number two, I would look at whatever photos catch your eye on social media it, you know, there are some real benefits to having all of that at your fingertips. And then that can just lead you in such a fun direction. Yeah. How do you plan your trips, if you don't mind me asking? So I take those two things into account. And then I usually hop on Google at that point and start doing my research, looking for websites that are similar to mine that can give me a bunch of really good free advice from someone who's been there and experienced it firsthand. And then that helps me sort of get some inspiration. But the best thing that I can do for my experiences is try to leave as much room for serendipity as possible because you learn so much when you're on the ground and also to move slowly, to not try to see too much at once because then you see too little of everything. Very well said. That's a good line. Did you, is that an original or did you lift it? Yeah, that? I just came up with it on the fly. Oh, <laughs> I should write it down. One. Same thing with the notion of, if you're going on a vacation personally and your only goal is to take a bunch of pictures and videos, well, then you're going to experience that place differently than when you truly feel it and be present for it. All right. Do you know where you're going next or no? I hope to go to French Polynesia in September. That's when the humpback whales come up to do their calving. And you can jump in the water and swim with them. So I've done that twice already. I love free diving and especially with a whale, it's crazy. So my plan is to go back. I'm bringing 16 women with me on one of my adventure tours, which I also run. So are you, what? You're swimming with humpback whales? Oh my God, we're looking at some of the footage now. This is ridiculous. First of all, weren't you terrified to swim with these animals that are this big? 
they are incredibly self-aware and gentle. And the amazing thing is they, they consent to doing it. I mean, they can swim away so easily and sometimes they do, but other times they will be super curious and they'll be swimming with us for hours. And, and it's really lovely to make eye contact with them because they really know what's going on. Their, their eye is the size of like a Volkswagen <laughs> Beetle. What the? Oh, they're big. You know, did you say humpback whale? Yes. You did. Yeah. And it's funny because that word humpback is pretty close to humble. And I would imagine that that would be a very humbling experience to go and swim with them. That is the word I would ascribe to it. Absolutely humbling. Uh huh. Okay. Well, we have to talk more about this. We have to talk about the trips you took. Now it's not good enough. Now you now you you were going by yourself. Now you got to now you're carting around eighteen people with you or sixteen or whatever the case. That's a whole other. Will, will you come back and and visit with us? That would be my pleasure anytime. All right. You are you are fantastic. Thank you, Kristen. Good to meet you. And uh, I'm glad we got to see some of the footage today. Where can people go to see the rest of it? BeMyTravelMuse.com. I'm also BeMyTravelMuse on Instagram and YouTube. Hey, guys, this channel is a celebration of all things travel. So hit that subscribe button. Leave a comment or question. Share this video. Like it. Rate it. Whatever. Believe me, it all helps. Thanks for watching.